Hey. Who is this? Guys, I'm on a call. What's your name? Uh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, Dr. Boyce. I'm Daya Hilliard. My my friends logged in under my thing. I completely forgot okay. the name. I got you. My, my apologies. Okay. Wait, is anyone else here? Uh, I guess they're going to be coming in shortly. Yeah, I hear some people. Daya Hilliard? Yes, Daya Hilliard. I got you. So is is tonight a weekly meeting or? Oh, uh, let me see. Yes, it is. It is a Zoom. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Because I was like, I didn't want to like come at the wrong time. You and Ayana. Who? Uh, which Ayana is this? Is this Collins Roberts? Yes. Let me see. All right, just waiting for other people to come in and we'll give them, give them a few more minutes because it is right at six right now. So we'll wait a few minutes. Well, it's definitely 37 people in this class. So, yeah, a lot more than two need to show up. I guess I'll just stay on the video call this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, where is the broadcast? No, I know how to make it. I just here. All right, there we go. We got more people coming now. Hello, everyone. Let me go ahead and go through the people I don't see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I seen Amar. Nope. Um, Couture Artist. Nope. Uh, Zarya Ashley. Nadia Bell. What's that name? Uh, Jalen Brumby. Michaela Cleveland. I thought I saw you. I see you. Uh, Larry Colbert. Nope. Uh, already got Ayana Collins Roberts. Um, Maya Cross. Nope. Um, Marius Davis. Did I see you? No, I did not. Okay. Um, Jay Downs. Nope. Uh, John A. Harris. No, let me see. I got Janae. I got here. Thank you. I got Janae Harrison. I mean, Janae Harrison already. Um, Xavier Hayes. You nope. here? Oh, that's um, uh, yeah. I'm Zoom user. Okay, cool. All right, I got you. Uh, China Hazel. Nope. It's only Okay. 
okay, it's only nine people on here anyway, so okay. Did you get Willie Lennon? Who uh yeah, I'm about I'm about to get there. Hold up. Okay. Hazel, no Hazel. Um Dea Hilliard, I already got you. Um Shaniqua Hines, nope. Uh Justice Hope. Uh nope. Miss Hubbard, I just let her in. I got her. Cameron Engle, nope. Uh Willie Lennon, just that's you just said something. I got you. Uh and I think Kyla Lofton, nope. Uh Skylar McDowell. Shadasia McMillan. Here. I oh, got you. Okay. Uh Lestacia Miller. Nope. Uh Jermaine Mitchum. Got you. Uh let me see. No Daniel Moore. Um Tatiana Philomar. Nope. No Patrick Price. No Kaylin Red. No Paris Rippey. No Joseph Reimer. No King Sirleaf. No Retia Taylor. Carrie Watkins. Nope. Um, Tavis Williams. Yep, I see you. And uh, Tiana Williams. All right. Um, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and talk very briefly. Did y'all um, read the cases and did you uh, look at my lectures for the cases? Anyone? Someone be the proxy and answer up. Did y'all do the reading assignment for this week, the two cases I posted? Yes. Okay. Um, did y'all did y'all also see the lectures that I posted? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, for everybody, was it understandable? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Um, that's good. Let me see. All right. So, um, anyone want to? Anyone want to try to guess and tell me what the overall theme of both those cases was? What was the what's the uh, common denominator in both those cases? I will pick a name. I see y'all up here. Who wants to say something? Who think they know what they're talking about? Okay. Um. Let's see who usually knows what they're talking about. Um, Janera Harrison, let's go with you. Okay, um, can you tell me the two passages again? <laughs> um, the, the, it's pretty much what, what, what was the common denominator between the two cases that y'all read and that I lectured on? I'm trying to remember the cases. I don't remember the cases. That's why I didn't say nothing. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to, what's the names of them? I could, I'll know it once you, once you Melendez say it. Melendez Diaz. Uh, versus Massachusetts and Crawford v. Washington. I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> I really don't remember. No, yeah, it's cool. You didn't read. You cool. You got time to read. No, I did read it. I promise I did. I'm driving right now. That's why I'm trying to. Uh, I can't think uh, and drive. I'm driving to work. Sorry. It's cool. We're going to move on. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna move on. Let's try uh, Miss Philomar. Let's try you. Did you did you read? Just keep it real, Miss Philomar. I'll be honest, I didn't. Okay, at least did anybody read? Y'all might well just keep it one hundred. Anybody want to step up and talk about what to do? Even if you didn't read, I still I did give a lecture. Did y'all at least look at my lecture on the case? I across. Okay, y'all didn't. All right. Um, who's that on three's iPhone? 
I'm trying to make sure I got you on the roll. All right, that's Larry Cobra, boss. Larry Cobra, all right. Yes, sir. You from DC, you got the accent. I know my former wife. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Larry Cobra. <boss. laughs> right, DC. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the brother just signed in. All right. Um, okay. Um, I want to talk very briefly about it because it doesn't look like most of y'all read um or um looked at my lecture. I'm not about to give another lecture right here. Y'all can just look at the one I gave. Um so um okay. Um uh, essentially both of those cases are about the hearsay rule. Um, and the hearsay rule essentially um, is a rule of evidence that um, prohibits um, hearsay, uh, hearsay from coming into court unless it falls under an exception to the hearsay rule. Uh, so to determine, what, to determine whether or not hearsay is allowed, the first thing we have to do is determine or figure out what hearsay is. What is the definition of hearsay? Um, it's not it's not the street definition. The street definition of hearsay is when people talking is he say, she say, or oh, this hearsay, you don't know what that is. No, it's not that definition. The real definition, the, the legal definition of hearsay in a court of law, um, based upon the rules of evidence, is an out-of-court statement made by a declarant who is not in court to testify. But that statement is being offered into evidence to prove the truth of what the declarant said. I know you like, I know this is pretty hard. Uh, it sounds weird, right? So let's say if, uh, let's say if I'm a killer, I'm out here killing people and, uh, and Janera Harrison witnesses me kill somebody or allegedly witnesses me kill somebody. And Janera and, and Larry Colbert is walking, you know, Larry Colbert is a good friend of Janera Harrison. And Janera Harrison comes up to Larry, to Larry Colbert and says, Larry, boys, kill, boys killed Shadeja McMillan. I saw him shoot in the head. Um, at that point, uh, months later or years later, when it's time for when I'm in my murder trial, my murder of uh, Shadeja McMillan trial, I'm the defendant. Uh, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but, Shade, but uh, Janera Harrison is, can, no, can no longer be found. Uh, maybe because I got rid of her. But, you know, you got to get rid of witnesses. But um, now what we have, they're tr now they're trying to bring in Larry Colbert to testify as to what Janera Harrison told him. So that is an example of hearsay. So it's a statement that Janera Harrison made that they're trying to get into court through someone else where Janera Harrison is not in court. Either she could, couldn't be there or she's not physically present in court. Um, so, or, and it's not even just about not being physically present. Sometimes it's, uh, you're in court, but you're, uh, they can't force you to testify or, or you're a person just like in the, uh, the Crawford case, um, they have what they call a spousal privilege, meaning that they can't force one spouse to testify in a, in a case against another spouse. Um, so a husband and wife in that, in, uh, in that jurisdiction couldn't be made to testify against each other. So because the husband was in, uh, was in, was in trial um, and the wife uh, could have, uh, would have been called to testify or give uh, inculpatory testimony um, against her husband, they have a spousal privilege and she chose to um, essentially uh, exercise that privilege. So that means even though she was physically there and present, um, she, they, they couldn't make her testify so technically she wasn't there. So that means that her testimony couldn't be used um, or she couldn't be forced to testify. That means the only way now to get any anything she said into evidence was now to get someone else to say it. Um, so someone else saying what she said, so in other words, it would have been an officer that would have been testifying to what she told them, that would have been hearsay. Um, so the hearsay rule says that that type of that type of testimony or the out of court testimony, the out of court statement of someone that's not in court to testify, um, is not allowed. Um, so what is is so it's not just that it's an out of court statement that's made by someone that's not there, but it's also a second part of the definition that says the the statement itself must be used to prove the truth of what they're actually saying. So. And my and let's go back to my hypothetical where I'm a killer, and uh, and 
who 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 was my who was my guy that was uh uh Larry Colbert. They they got Larry on the stand to testify uh to what Janera Harrison told him. Uh but Janera Harrison is not there. Um if they so it's, it's the mur it's the it's the trial where I'm on trial for murder and they're trying to get in, they're trying to get uh Larry Cobra to testify that Janera Harrison told him that she saw me kill Shadeja McMillan. Uh, in that situation, it's being offered to prove the truth of what she said. So that is not allowed. The reason it's not allowed, and we'll go back, uh, we'll talk about the Sixth Amendment and the Confrontation Clause. The reason it's not allowed is because as a defendant, or, or not even just as a defendant, anyone that's testifying or any statement that comes in at trial, um, the opposing party has the right to to cross-examine the person that's giving that statement. Uh, if it's a situation now where that statement comes in, but Janera Harrison is no longer available for my defense attorney to cross-examine, uh, then that essentially is a violation of my Sixth Amendment right. That means a statement or a testimony comes in that I can't cross-examine. So it becomes unfair. So let's say if Janera Harrison is there and she testifies that she saw me kill Shadeja McMillan, at least I, can, I have the opportunity, my attorney has the opportunity to now cross-examine her on whether or not she actually saw me kill Shadeja McMillan. So she can say, are you sure it was, uh, are you sure it was Boyce? Are you sure it wasn't someone else? So, she, so if she's present, at least she can be cross-examined. Um, so if she's not present, um, and that statement gets in that essentially might send me to jail. Um, it's unfair if I can't now cross examine that statement that can send me to jail. Uh, so that so uh, that's one reason uh, that here that the hearsay rule is where it is, where it doesn't allow that type of uh, testimony to get in. Now, there are certain things that are not hearsay. Let's say we're in a, sep a separate trial uh, that's not, that has nothing to do with the murder of Shadeja and Miller. Um, let's say we're in an insurance trial where they're trying to fit or in a trial where they're trying to figure out if I was murdered or if I was still alive at the time, uh, trying to figure out, you know, my time of death. Um, at that point, if Larry, if, uh, if Larry Colbert comes in and testifies that, nah, he wasn't dead because Janera Harrison said she saw him kill Shadeja McMillan at the same time at six o'clock. So he wasn't, he was alive. In that situation, it's not being offered to prove that I killed Shadeja McMillan, but it's being offered to prove that I was alive because Janera Harrison saw me. So you see the difference. So it's not just that it's an out-of-court statement, but it's also the, the, the second part of the definition is why it's actually being offered. Is it being offered to prove the truth of the, of the out-of-court statement itself, or is it being is it being offered to prove so, uh, something that is implied by the truth by, by the state the statement that was given. So if if the statement is that Janera Harrison saw me kill Shadeja McMillan, and they're only offering that statement to prove that I wasn't dead, um, that I was alive and kicking, then it's not it's not hearsay. So hearsay is the out of court statement from someone that's not there to testify themselves, and it's. Uh, and the second part of that definition is it must is it has to be offered to prove the truth of what I'm saying uh, of that statement itself. Uh, so that that's that's the definition of hearsay. Um, now the general rule is that hearsay is not allowed. Now there are exceptions to the hearsay rule. Now we're not going to go through those exceptions. I just want to teach the rule because there's a, essentially a whole class in law school on evidence, um, and you know they they're like. A whole bunch of there, there are at least seven or eight exceptions to the hearsay rule that we're not going to go into because that's that's kind of too deep. I just want you guys to know the general rule of hearsay, so that if you're ever called to testify um, in your capacity as law enforcement or whatever, you know that you can't say what someone else said, and that you can't say what someone else saw. So you can't say, well, we saw him. Uh, when you use the word "we," that implies that that someone else saw so you're speaking for someone else as well so you can only speak to what you saw and you can only speak to what you said um so uh, the general rule is when you're testifying and you're testifying about what you saw 
Um, you can you can only say, well, I saw the I saw the defendant get out of the car and he had a gun, or uh, you, but you can't say we saw the defendant. You can only say I saw the defendant. Uh, when we approached the car, I saw the defendant uh, with a gun. Um, that they, so you can only speak for yourself. And the same way, the same rule applies when you're now being asked to talk about, or when you when you're given an answer um, that is essentially talking about what someone else said. So you know you can't come. I can't come in court and say, well, Janair Harrison told me. Um, and because that now that becomes hearsay. Now I'm putting in a statement from someone else that isn't that isn't present uh, to be cross examined. Uh, so that is the general rule. That that's what I want you to get from both cases. So the Melendez Diaz case dealt with a document that was hearsay. So it's not it's not even just statements. What what someone says is all. It's also what someone writes uh, a report that's going to be produced in court. Uh, so you know in the Crawford case it was about what someone said or what someone told a police officer and how that police officer is trying to trying to trying to talk and say what that person told them in court when that person's not available to testify. Um, and in the Melendez Diaz case, it was about a document um, that was actually uh, put forth to say so he, he was arrested on drug on a drug charge. And of course the drugs got con the, the alleged the whatever he had on him got confiscated and sent to the state uh, the state um, drug lab to be tested. Uh, it was tested at the drug lab and sent back. And instead of them, instead of the person from the drug lab coming in and saying, I tested this and it's cocaine, they just sent a report saying it's cocaine. So the, the issue there is when that, if that report isn't, comes into court, um, at the end of the day, I can't cross examine a piece of paper. I can't cross examine a report. So this person's given a whole statement about what these drugs are. But I'm not allowed to cross-examine them on how they tested it, what the industry standard is for testing drugs, uh, whether they had the certain the, the, the right number of controls to make sure that it was actually what they're saying it was. So I, um, by allowing that this piece of paper to come into court, with uh, it, it essentially robs the defendant of the ability to now cross-examine it. I got you, Carrie. Who else said something? Uh, I got you too, Jalen. Hold on. Yeah, I got Jalen and Kerry Watkins. Okay, so um, that that's essentially what happened, and uh, and I'm not gonna tell you all about the case. Like I say, you need to read those cases or at least listen to my um my lectures on the cases because there are quite so that so even though we're done with the book. What I'm teaching, what I'm teaching you, the stuff I gave you is, is going to be on the test. So you're going to be uh, questioned on it. So you might want to, at some point, uh, look at what I'm, I've, I've given you. So, um, so even though we're out of the book, um, you still got the two cases and the lectures on each case. And then, and then next week uh, or tomorrow, um, there's going to be another. I'm going to drop a report and another well a case on uh, da uh, Daubert Pharmaceuticals, um, uh, uh, Daubert v. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals. So you need to read that case as well. And I, there's a lecture for that case. So all three of these cases, I know y'all didn't read them. I don't know if anyone read it at all or looked at my lecture on the cases. Um, I'm trying to spoon feed y'all this stuff. It will be tested. So um, if you take L's, you take L's. And then remember, remember this stuff, now we're out of the book. So this stuff ain't in the book no more. It's no. You can't, you can't, this last, this, uh, on the final exam, you're not going to be able to, uh, on questions involving these cases, you're not going to be able to go to a book and find questions that I already have the answers to. So now that we're out of the book, uh, now you might really want to study, um, cause you know, this, this stuff isn't, uh, is no longer in the book. So you might, you might want to at least read the material, uh, for class and look at my lectures if you didn't do it before. Um, so uh, that, that's, it's very important that you do that now. So, um, are there um, any questions on um, Are there any questions uh, on uh, the Melendez Diaz case or the Crawford case? Do y'all understand? I know it's kind of it's a it's a weird rule, but do y'all understand the hearsay rule? Hello. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Right. Yes, I understand. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all be y'all be mad at on the zooms. Um, 
So <laughs> let me talk to myself. Uh, so that's all I'm giving you. Um, so um, you're on your own. Um, I've talked about it. So you might want to read those cases. Um, so re read the cases and um, and uh, look at the and uh, at least watch the uh, the lectures I gave. So um, that's it for today. Tomorrow, uh, remember tomorrow um, I'm posting the uh, the Dalbert uh, the Dalbert case is going to be up, and there's also a lecture that goes with it. So you might and I'm going to talk about Rule 702 and the entry of scientific uh, evidence and how that process goes. So you might want to look at that because that's another thing. There's going to be questions on that as well on the exam. And we have our final um, Zoom next week on the 12th. Um, so we have our final Zoom on the on the 12th. No, that's not our final Zoom. Let me see. Final Zoom is actually on the 19th. Um, so, um, but I'm going to need y'all to make sure y'all catch up on this. I know y'all might not have read the cases. And actually, what's crazy what I posted wasn't even the whole case. It was like the, the um, it was the uh, Wikipedia printout of the case. Yeah. A brief synopsis of the case. So really, if you read the cases, they're probably like 40 pages long. I'm not even asking you to do that. I gave you what to read. So read it, okay? Um, so yeah, so re read that and then prepare for that. And, and then uh, look at my lecture and, and you'll know what's going on. So when you get questions, which you will get questions, you'll, you'll be able to answer them correctly. Um, so that's it for this evening. Um, next week, uh, like I said, next week's important. Um, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the the case that, that we the the Darbert case, um, and then uh, your you got a cumulative course review that's going to be up, um, and you also have a classmate that's going to be giving a um, a presentation as well. Uh, so we need you to be here next week. So. Um, you guys take care. Are there any questions? And I think let me no. who uh, anybody want to make sure that I got them on the roll. I think I called everybody. Uh, uh, everyone's accounted for. All right then. Well, y'all be good. I'll see y'all uh, uh, next week. And make sure y'all the, the least you can do is read the material, okay? And and, and at least look at my lectures. Uh, so y'all be good. Take care. I have one question. Go ahead. Um, for the discussions, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see a due date for them. Wait, well, I think I'm looking at something different. Okay, never mind. And I'm, I'm actually going to be putting your grades in right after we got a class for it. So if you if you answer the discussion board, I'm gonna go through and check them. Oh out. yeah, it was like it's two more discussions on here, but I don't see them. I never seen them posted. That does language matter in the name that theory. Let me see. Have you get have you given us those yet? Name that theory was up on October 29th. It was up this week. Oh, I didn't I didn't catch it up there. Is it possible I could still turn them in? Uh let me, I'm gonna see how many people did it because if 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 a whole lot of people in the class didn't do it, I'll probably repost it. That means there was some type of communication glitch. Uh so let me look it up. Hold on, I'll look it up while I got you on here now. Okay, yeah, because I was checking periodically and I was wondering. Because you guys are supposed to get announcements when uh, discussion boards come up. Let me, let me see that. Yeah, the last announcement we got was for the one on the. I know definitely on, let me see. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, um, I actually posted a, an announcement because I remember third, we meet on every Thursday, but I posted, I said, no Zoom today. Discussion board is available to take. And I said, um, there will be no Zoom meeting this evening. However, discussion board is up and available until Monday, November the 2nd at 11.59 p.m. It is worth five points towards your final grade. Also, the lectures and material for next week's Zoom discussion will be posted tomorrow. That's, that was October 30th at 7 a.m. So be prepared to discuss the two cases next week, um, which no one is actually prepared to discuss. So um, I I can tell that no one took heed to my announcement. So let me let me check the discussion board real quick before I got y'all here.
So just to clarify, there's no Zoom meeting next week, correct? There is a Zoom meeting next week. Um, okay. Yeah, so we're going to be discussing the Daubert case. So the Daubert case will be up tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So the, 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 the case or whatever the, Wiki, the, the Wikipedia printout uh, is going to be up. And you can read that. I'm not even asking you to read the whole case, but read that. Um, and also, I, I lectured on the case as well. So I lectured to explain what was going on in the case. So um, that'll be up, um, and we'll discuss that. That's what we'll be discussing on um, on the twelfth. So we, we do have a Zoom we do have a, a Zoom meeting next next Thursday the twelfth. Um, so yeah, so uh, we'll we'll discuss that, and you have a classmate that's going to be making a presentation. So uh, so yeah, let me see, and then yeah, your last Zoom discussion will be that following week. Which is uh, so we'll do an exam review and a chemistry review, um, and the exam an exam will be posted uh, that next day, um, and it'll be up. So uh, it'll be up for like four days, five, like five days to the case. So um, let me see for discussion board number three. I got. Uh, 27 out of 37 people that, that actually answered it. And that might not even be the exact number of people. And then for discussion board number four, only 20 out of 30. So that's that's a little bit more than half. So that's kind of terrible. Um, I will I will repost it. Um, it'll be up until midnight tomorrow night. That's, so that's that's discussion board number four. So um, pretty much a little bit more than so. Let's round if we round up and say we have 40 people in this class, only 20, only 20 people only have 20 responses uh, to discussion board number four. Um, I don't know why y'all, I, I definitely put the announcement up. I mean, actually, I made a personal announcement on the day it went up. Um, so I, I don't, uh, and only 27 people responded to discussion board number three, but at least that's more than half. Um, so I'm not I'm not reopening discussion board number three. So if you didn't do that, you took it. You got to take it. Um, discussion board number four, though. Let me go ahead and I'll reopen it. Um, It'll be up through tomorrow at eleven fifty nine. So discussion. Okay, thank you. So discussion board number four is. Let me make sure I do it right. Hold on. Yeah, uh, November sixth. That's tomorrow at eleven fifty nine. And I, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and go in and uh, I'll go ahead and go in now and put an announcement up for everyone. So you, you have one more opportunity if if you don't do it by then. Um, it is what it is. I hope you showed up for the extra credits. Oh, that's definitely five points you're missing out on. So um, is everybody good? Yes. All right. Y'all take care. Be good. Thank you.